The River That Flows, written by Tian Florence, illustrated by Julie Gibbs. There's a river that flows for each one of us. Sometimes it moves gently, sometimes it's a rush. On this day, the river had bloated until it spilled over the bridges and up to the hills. Too full and too fast, too hurried to wait, it scraped life from the banks like the scraps off a plate. One of the creatures displaced from their home was a muscle man tree ant on a journey unknown. With a current below and more waves up ahead, the ant held on tight, took a deep breath and said, Where are my brothers and my sisters too? Where is my family and what should I do? I cannot swim, though I have six legs that move. I lift more than my weight, but what does that prove? These rapids are angry. I look to my right and find I'm not at all alone in my fright. Hello, I do holler. Hello, I do shout, till two bright wings flutter with a, what's this about? Last thing I recall was an aphid or three that I found in a garden far drier than we. I don't understand how I'm now on this boat of a leaf, but good grief, for I cannot float. I nod in agreement, for I'm much the same. On land I feel safe, but right now I feel lame. The waves crash around us, I grip for dear life to the remnants of bunyas keeping me from more strife. My heart's beating fast, but my body moves slow. Then a creature floats past us that I do not know. Hello, I do holler. Hello, I do shout. Till eight legs do shiver with a, how do we get out? Last thing I remember was the very still shore. So still indeed, you might think it a bore. But the shore is long gone now, that is clear to see. For this river is wilder than a cow in a tree. I nod in agreement. What else could I say? For the eight-legged's grievance sounds much like my day. This water keeps rushing to an end I can't see, a destination unknowing to he and to me. So woe is our morning and woe is our day. How will we keep going? What price will we pay? Crack goes the thunder, but a storm never hit. Was a tree. Now I'm under a branch that fell from it. I cannot swim. I cannot breathe. I cannot stay. I cannot leave. <gasps> a breath does fill my lungs, and I'm pressed into what feels like a hard shelled tongue. What on earth is this? I think out loud. Why, I am a snail, a voice says proud. A tramp snail, if we are to be exact. I'm the snail that just saved you, and that is a fact. So we floated together, all legs, wings and shells, through the volatile weather and the river's harsh swells, till we spotted a clearing, it's land, up ahead, and with all our legs steering, washed upon the riverbed. Hello, I do holler, hello, I do shout, but before I catch my breath, a polyrachis army march out. You're an odd bunch, they snicker, a bit lost, they do gloat. Then I see their eyes flicker. You call that a boat? In that moment I feel smaller than bacteria, but I'd rather stand than heal to this bully's hysteria. So I tell them, this raft, full of all but a goat, did its job and a half, far more than any boat. The army stood still. For a moment I thought they'd go in for the kill, but instead they stopped short. Boom goes the bully. I sure put him in his place, but his gaze drifts behind me with horror on his face. I see hard shells and more legs than any one bug should need. I wonder, if a bug begs, could it escape this centipede? What a curious sight, this absurd little game, where you're ready to fight, though you look just the same. Then the centipede gestured to his scarab crew. You know, differences can make us much stronger, too. The army then shifted their weight on the ground. The tension had lifted. They gathered around. We spoke of our journey. They told us their own. Till the river lapped gently beside our new home. Sometimes rivers look calm, despite the turmoil beneath. Like a grudge or a qualm kept behind gritted teeth. 
But this river can teach us much more than it takes about friends that reach for us when everything breaks. So if you're on your own trying to paddle upstream, you're never as alone as it may seem.